Hello and welcome to our talk, uh, how to migrate 100 clusters between clouds without uh, downtime. Uh, my name is Manuel Stüssel. I'm a systems architect and tech lead at Kubernetes. Uh, we're doing a whole bunch of Kubernetes and cloud native consulting, and we're developing um, the Kubernetes Kubernetes platform, as well as Cube One, our uh, Kubernetes management tools. With me today is Tobias Schneck, um, Head of Professional Services at Kubernetes, and he's going to tell you a few words about himself now. Yes, thanks, Manuel. Um, yeah, my name is Tobias. I'm already working two and a half years for Lutze and mostly uh, responsible for professional service, where we discovered a way how to migrate clusters. So uh, this was a fancy idea, and now we want to present you how far we came to the journey and um, so handing back to Manuel. All right, thanks. Um, right, why would you actually want to migrate uh, clusters between cloud providers? And there are actually a couple of reasons for that. Um, on the more businessy side of things, um, you might have better contract conditions at another cloud provider, so you would be able to save cost. Um, there could be the need to migrate data centers to a different hosting provider or cloud provider from a logistic point of view to like a legal point of view, or you're driven by a multi-cloud strategy uh, and you want to decrease your dependency on one um, single uh, existing cloud provider and, and expand uh, out to other uh, providers. There are also some technical reasons for that. Um, so again, more a logistical kind of reason might be that you uh, have a location migration of a data center, um, or you might want to migrate to another network segment uh, for um, separation of concerns or um, other uh, reasons. Um, you might be um, adapting um, improvements in your on-prem and cloud environments um, at a new provider that you want to use, like new features, new uh, different infrastructure um, and technologies you want to use at a, at a new provider. Or you're bound to some constraints when it comes to data location uh, of certain um, uh, services you're running, maybe on some cloud offered services. Uh, for example, where you run uh, your machine learning and where you have your machine learning data or some GDPR um, uh, compliance um, needs that you need to fulfill. Um, so what are the main challenging uh, challenges around moving to another cloud provider? Um, Kubernetes itself abstracts infrastructure, but it does have uh, several kind of dependencies nonetheless, right? Um, so it does consume infrastructure resources, for example, the virtual machines where the cluster itself runs uh, on. Um, it uses and consumes the network provided, right? The IP address space, uh, routing and firewalling rules, management of ingress and egress traffic, and also um, DNS, as always, and uh, external storage systems. Um, then there are Kubernetes components that are actually dependent on a certain cloud provider. Um, and most of that is the cloud controller manager um, that contains the node controller for updating Kubernetes nodes, the service controller, which uh, um, translates a service type load balancer within Kubernetes to an actual cloud load balancer in the cloud provider's environment, um, the route controller, uh, which is responsible for setting up network routes in the cloud provider's network. Um, but there are also things like storage classes uh, that map to uh, cloud provider specific um, storage offerings. And sometimes the overlay network you use has some dependency on a cloud provider as well. Um, and just to remind ourselves, um, a, a quick overview uh, of the components of Kubernetes, um, the central one being the API server, uh, which kind of handles all uh, the changes in state of the cluster itself, and the worker nodes with a kubelet, um, which runs the actual workload um, that, that users run on top of that cluster. And between the API server and the kubelet, there has to be a two-way um, communication happening. Um, and um, between the kubelets as well, um, I mean, between the worker nodes as well. And that is uh, one main challenge we're, we're kind of solving today. Um, to, to enable this ways of communication. 
And that directly leads us um, to our actual um, dependencies when we migrate. So for us, the application workload has the highest priority, but we need to ensure for that to be the case, we need to ensure fundamental networking rules that Kubernetes expect to be in place. Uh, those rules are that all containers within a pod can communicate um, unimpededly um, on layer four, so TCP, UDP. Um, all pods can communicate with all other pods within the cluster without netting. And all nodes can communicate with all pods and vice versa also without netting. And the final one, the IP that the pod sees itself um, is the same IP that others see the pod as. And this is really important to keep up so that the actual networking between pods and applications works. Um, we have to have some external dependencies uh, that need to be reachable, right? like uh, externally routed IPs for lo load balancers and node pod services within the cluster, and uh, DNS names need to be reachable uh, slash resolvable, right? Um, and storage, um, some applications might have to have state that needs to be migrated without data loss. So when we look at that now um, at a level of, of like, scale um, of hundreds of clusters maybe. Um, we look at large organizations running a whole bunch of clusters in different location for different organizational units in different time zones, right? Um, and for those users, cluster users, um, the cluster itself is just a service that they consume, right? Um, and that means that the cluster connection and secrets, so the actual interface that the user has to the cluster doesn't, uh, is not allowed to change, right? Otherwise it would impede the actual service that those users consume. Um, so how do we solve for that? Um, the status quo is uh, we'll have a multi-cloud setup with the Kubernetes Kubernetes platform, our open source uh, Kubernetes management platform. Um, and it has a concept of a seed cluster that holds the containerized control plane of the user clusters. The user clusters being the clus Kubernetes clusters that are managed by KKP. Um, the worker nodes itself are provisioned uh, via the Kubernetes machine controller, which is a cluster API conform uh, uh, operator that translates a machine deployment object um, into actual machines um, VMs on cloud providers. And we'll use Canal as our default uh, overlay networking, which is effectively Flannel um, VXLAN overlay networking with a Calico um, network policy plugin. And the target is that we migrate the user and C cluster control planes and worker nodes to a different cloud provider. Uh, we'll keep all the external cluster endpoints stable. That means the control plane, the Kubernetes API server endpoints, and the actual application endpoints being the DNS and ingress uh, routing. Um, out of scope for now is the storage replication. Um, the assumption is that the actual application layer manages the storage replication like etcd, which is a feature that we will use uh, to migrate um, the user cluster control plane. So how does it look? Um, we have a Kubernetes installation that has a seed cluster, uh, which is also just a Kubernetes cluster running in the Google Cloud. Uh, and it hosts a couple of user clusters. And we'll have a look at the vSphere user cluster that runs worker nodes on a vSphere cluster. And we want to move all of that over to AWS, because uh, for whatever reason, we want to run on AWS. Um, and just some recommended prerequisites. Uh, um, doing that uh, in production. Uh, you'll have to announce a maintenance window and block cluster updates so that those doesn't, don't interfere with uh, the actual migration process. Um, we'll have to ensure that our backup and recovery procedure for the seed and user clusters, but also for the application workloads uh, works, is tested and, and proven to be working, right? Um, we'll should create a uh, target cloud cluster as a reference, in our case, an AWS cluster, just so that we can uh, copy and paste some stuff over. Um, and we'll have to ensure that uh, we actually control the DNS entries and be able to, to switch over DNS entries to the new cloud endpoints uh, once we migrated the workload over to the new cloud provider. Yeah, uh, and now we'll look at the actual uh, solution approach and Toby is going to give us a quick demo on how that works. 
Okay, then over to me. Thanks, Manuel. Um, let me share my screen. Hopefully you can see it now. Um, and yes, so what is the solution approach? Um, so first of all, we want to migrate the user cluster workers. So uh, in this case, um, we, we want to migrate it and we want to have uh, new workers in the target cloud, how we can reach that. So we're using the so-called machine controller uh, in Kubernetes and Kubeborn and uh, this controller can create uh, workers based on CRDs was called machine deployments. So machine deployment is similar like the uh, deployment of pods, it's a deployment of machines. And if we like change that um, machine controller and give them a new specification, we can create the machines in the new cloud. Um, what is needed to ensure the traffic is reachable, we need to somehow need a, a, a way how to communicate between pods and pods and nodes to nodes. For that, we create a VPN overlay by a daemon set and route then the traffic of the CNI, uh, in our case, kernel through the VPN network. And that's ensure that we have maybe different network segmentations, but still can talk to each other if we have this client to client VPN traffic enabled. And uh, at least we should ensure the reachability. That means that we try as long as possible to keep the ingress endpoint stable to, to trans and then transfer the workload to, to the new cloud. And after the workload is the new cloud, we uh, delete the connectivity. Okay, how SAS, uh, this can look like. So we have the seed cluster what hosts in the containerized control plane. Here we have uh, some um, controllers and we have the Kubernetes containerized control plane. We have their per default VPN server. This VPN server is used for VPN uh, traffic between this control plane and the workers at Kubernetes. So that uh, workers can connect with the control plane and the control plane can back uh, tunnel the uh, cube control logs and exec calls over this VPN tunnel. Um, uh, also, we have a machine controller which is configured to place on machines on the vSphere cloud. And we have between the vSphere workers, we have an overlay what's based on kernel. And we have a metal LP service what uh, creates then the, the inbound traffic uh, load balancer to the dedicated application ports. First step how to migrate is now to deploy a VPN daemon set. Uh, this VPN daemon set ensures that we have an uh, VPN client at every worker node. This opens in the worker node a new interface and we route the traffic from the VPN interface um, through the VPN interface, uh, our kernel to our dedicated overlay. So, and for that we need to pause the cluster because our cluster is controlled by a cluster controller and this cluster controller would then reconcile uh, the, the machine deployments and uh, the VPN servers. So to ensure that this does not happen, we pause the cluster to make some patches there. Next step is um, after um, we um, <clears throat> have the credentials for the new cloud uh, adopted, we can update the cluster spec um, and specificate the new AWS cloud. Then uh, the machine controller get updated and we get a new machine controller instance that can now talk to AWS. Um, the new nodes get created and also joins our VPN network and joins so also the kernel overlay routing. Uh, the cloud controller now ensures that we also have a new AWS LB, what get created. Currently this LLB is not routed, but anyway, the traffic goes from here to over the metal LB service to the dedicated workload. After this is happens, we can uh, re remove the workload from the old uh, workers and move the workload to the new applications. After this is done, we can also rename uh, the DNS names to the new uh, cloud uh, load balancer and ensure that we have now migrated traffic to the new cloud. At least then clean up the old resources and we remove the, we not needed any more VPN overlay because this two uh, workers can now talk to each other with ETH interface. And that's how we migrated it. So to give you a short, insight, a short look what already is happening, we prepared some demo. 
the area that uh, currently says project is like not fully finished. So it's more a proof of concept state. So as we see here, we have here an app, or what is our reference Echo service and this deployed on the cluster. Let's take a look in our Kubernetes control plane. And in this control plane, we have um, the dedicated clusters here. So uh, first uh, we have here this KubeCon migrate cluster, what we want to migrate. Here we see um, this cluster contains um, the containerized control planes, a machine deployment of two nodes and a so-called Echo service engine X and uh, Metal LP. This Metal LP points to the IP address of the vSphere uh, and uh, deploys our Echo services. So um, if we go to the vSphere, we see here uh, under the cluster ID, um, what is here KBHC. Um, we see here um, the virtual machines running. And this is one we want now to move to the AWS. First step, uh, what we already did is that we um, deployed a VPN. So we patched our VPN server. And for that, we see that we have a cluster spec and we have, a, in, so we see here also in our C cluster that everything what you see in Kubernetes is also represented as a cluster CRD. In the, in the cluster namespace here, this namespace, we see the control planes. And here you see that we have like the open VPN server running and we have the API server and all other components running. If we connect here to the user cluster, so let's take this shortcut. Yes, I want to go to the KubeCon cluster. Um, we see a bunch of containers here, and we see here that we have our Echo service, we have our Nginx, we have our kernel, we have our VPN client. And that's now we want what we want to migrate. So um, yeah, first step is uh, the VPN is already there. So we can now deploy um, our control plane and migrate it. What is, I think the most interesting part of the whole thing. So we can then say, okay, here our update target cloud script, what does it do? So we have here, um, yeah, we first we need somehow um, the cluster ID and we need a project ID. The project ID we find here in our Kubernetes um, URL here, the project ID, we can copy it and we can here uh, place it. So what is the first step? We create in backup, uh, that's the backup of the specification of this cluster. So yeah, I want to create it. And as next step, I want to pause the cluster. And uh, yes, uh, after I pause the cluster, uh, the controller does not care anymore. So now I can safely update my cloud provider. So yes, I want to patch the cloud provider. So I create a new cluster, the YAML, what we now can take a look on. So um, if we go now to my files, I see here uh, that I have here under control plane, somehow a new file. Um, uh, where it is? should be here. Let's see. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Here we are. Now we have um, this one backup cluster YAML and uh, the patch YAML. So let's see what the difference is. So yeah, so currently that's our cluster CRD. On the left, we have the backup cluster spec and we have here our API server token and so on. And we have to finalize us what clean up our cloud when we delete the clusters. And that's now the important stuff. We have here um, the vSphere uh, configuration, what reference a credential and uh, the folder and so on. And that's something what we now remove as well as status fields. And uh, we uh, apply this change now to our cluster. And the first step, to remove the credentials, um, this is needed. So let's apply that and see what happens. So we see now we have configured and now to start reconciling, we need to 
um, pause the cluster that the cluster controller can take care about the change. And yeah, let's see uh, what now is happening. So we have now the cloud spec what get recreated by the cloud controller. So hopefully everything works well. And we see that the cluster get now reconciled. Yeah, we see now we're getting the new object. We have the vSphere is empty. Okay, this looks good. And we can now watch uh, that hopefully, yeah, we see the API server is reconciling to now an empty cloud provider. Okay, cool. That was the first step. So now as next step, we want to change to, to our AWS. So let's go out of this view and let's pause the cluster again. Like currently, uh, depending on the Kubernetes controller, we need this two step upgrades uh, because we are just a kube control client and not an operator. And, and now we can patch the cloud provider. So what happens now? Um, yes, I want to patch it. Yes, I'd want a new secret. So there we create a new secret reference for the AWS credentials. And then uh, we created a new cluster patch file again. So let's also see here what's different now. So we see now we have uh, changed, basically removed the finalizers because these are not valid anymore. We added uh, annotation here to the Kubernetes AWS region. We patched the cloud spec AWS with the credentials and we have a migration, a new data center. So that's the new migration data center where we want to migrate it. Um, after we now make that pause to false, uh, the controller try to reconcile where a uh, new AWS uh, should place there. And the nice thing is therefore Kubernetes creates now a new um, security group, a new um, yeah, roles. And that's hopefully what's now happening. So let's see. So let's patch that cluster and um, configure it. And yeah, now let's unpause the cluster and see what's happen happening. Good, so, okay. So what we see now here, we can reconcile. We see we get now here also an AWS data back from the Kubernetes controller and see what we created new security group and the instance profile. Um, cool. So let's see what happens with my components. We, we now seeing, yeah, we have a restarting API server again. Uh, it started now with a new cloud credentials. So let's try to find a little bit out what's happening here. So we have here um, a deployment. So, and let's take a look into, oh, it's the wrong side. Let's see uh, what we are have placed there. So, Okay, get explain deployment. Um, for sure, I need to write kube config. Um, and now we should go to the API server of our cluster and see that here we have specified, hopefully now the uh, cloud provider uh, with here um, our new cloud provider AWS. And now that's reconciling take place. And we also have a new machine controller that now is able to talk with AWS. So what we can now create is the new AWS workers. So let's go back into the user cluster. So um, yeah, here go to this QCode migration cluster. And first, um, yeah, pause the old machine deployments to be sure. So uh, worker, uh, machine deployment pause. Um, that we don't upgrade this all machines. And yes, pause, done. And then we can now create our new AWS workers. Therefore, we need uh, first a few inputs. So here we need to specify the cluster ID uh, the instance profile in the security group but Kubernetes had created automatically. So here, yeah, I want to see the metadata. Um, we have here the cluster ID. So let's change that one here. Uh, we have the AWS instance profile. What have we created? What should be that one? 
and we have the AWS security group. Okay, so let's create that one. Um, save it and then running the script deploy. So now, hopefully, fingers crossed, we create new AWS workers. So yes, I want to create one. Here we see that's now rendered in, in the machine deployment. We see our security group. We see that we all want to have a T3 medium. And um, yeah, that in the US West 1 CISO. Okay, then let's deploy it. Um, so fingers crossed. Yes, as has been created. So I want to watch the creation. Yes, I want to see that. Um, and we now see what the machine deployment, we have a new machine deployment with Ubuntu target AWS, what creates two new machines and uh, what get provision now in AWS. Um, so let's see, uh, our workload is still running as we see. Uh, we have here our target cluster. We see also here we have the new Ubuntu target AWS node group, what's now get built. Um, and um, yeah, Let's go to AWS and see what's have been created. So here, um, hopefully the AWS console is fast enough. Uh, we can now go to the EC2 instances and should see that we can have booted now new two instances. And Let's see. Yeah, we see here initializing. So that's the new two machines, what we created. If we take a look here, we also see the tag. That's the cluster for what we have. And for that, so uh, we have created new machines. So let's wait until the points uh, they are get booted. In the meantime, we can take a look in the load balancer. So hopefully, um, we also have a load balancer created. That's what the AWS uh, uh, Cloud Controller Manager will create because we already have a service type load balancer in the cluster. And that AWS takes over and creates also a load balancer on their side. So let's see, that's not the right one. That's the right one. Um, here we see there's a class created, but we don't have any instances here because yeah, the instances get now booted. So let's hopefully, let's go back and see how fast they are coming up. Okay, we now see that we get a new node that's not ready, but we can already connect to him. So let's try to SSH into one AWS node. And let's go here for that kind and see what's happening there. Yes, I want to connect. And yeah, we see here that we have here uh, a flannel route and we will soon have a cube uh, interface for the VPN server as soon as that's started. Here we go, here we see that interface and we can now try to get the interconnection between one cloud to another. So we, I then connect here to the on-premise node on the down and um, let's connect to that one Ubuntu and test if we are now can talk between clouds. Um, here as well, I have IP address for the cube interface, what is 10, 20, 42. And let's try if we can bring it from our AWS node. Okay, now we see that we get a connection here from the cloud uh, node to the on-premise node. Good, cool. So next step, what we now need to do is to, to migrate our workload. Okay, cool. Then uh, let's go back here and um, um, here as well. Um, and try to migrate uh, the 
the workload. So we have now switched here to the user cluster to see what's happening and um, see, uh, take a look in the Echo server namespace. Sorry. Um, we see now here, okay, the Echo server is deployed on the migration vSphere node. We want to now to roll out the new workload to the new cloud. So let's try to cordon uh, the nodes, cordon the nodes, uh, because that new workload should not anymore go to this old node. Good, let's cordon. And we have the another node to cordon. So that means that the node should be now marked as not schedule able. Yes, so scheduling disabled, perfect. So we can now uh, use the cube control rollout restart feature to now restart our deployment of the Echo server uh, in the namespace Echo server to trigger like a rolling release of the Echo server without any change. So uh, yeah, let's trigger that one and see what's happening in the down. We see, okay, that's still, we have uh, the application up and running. And yes, so now we see the container get created in a new cloud. So first success. So hopefully this will now work. Um, we see that now a new container is running on the new AWS workers and we can now terminate the old one. So that's um, it's now going step by step and we have three new workers and you see um, the service is still reachable and we got, get now hopefully also if we go to the browser, we, um, we can see here detail that we get back um, from the AWS node to cause. So we have, uh, where is the host name? No, it's just the host name. Um, we see that the, yeah, the workers are running in a new cloud and uh, they're still reachable through our old endpoint. Cool. So that seems to work um, like now. That's how the next step would be to migrate all other workload to the new cloud, remove the load balancer and then using uh, the new DNS name. So um, we can quickly try if the new load balancer is now listening. So yeah, we have here the new instances and maybe the DNS name is already propagated uh, to see if this is working. We can see, okay, let's change that to the new DNS name um, and no, so DNS is not um, there. So yeah, good. Then finally migrated to the new cloud. So how are the next step looks like? So um, that's uh, how we can create the migration, uh, the worker user clusters and to move completely to the another cloud, we need now to migrate also the seed cluster for that. How we can achieve that is the same way. We're reusing the same principle. So here we, we have the workers now in the new cloud and now we need to, to make, migrate control plane. The good thing is on that, in any case, the workers were, uh, workload is still safe because it's already in the new cloud. So we can migrate it even if we may um, break it. Um, the only thing what would maybe not work is an upgrade of the Kubernetes, but still the workload is safe. So how we migrate the seed clusters first, we cre create new master nodes for the seed masters. So that means we creating new no nodes, putting a new Kubernetes API load balance on it, update the API endpoints uh, because this no API endpoints are stable in the Kubernetes cluster. And then we um, block uh, for sure the seed cluster uh, for upgrades so that we don't anything, yeah, uh, trigger unexpected during, during this migration. And then, um, yeah, we migrating the user control planes uh, in the same way as migrated the workload now at the user clusters. So we move the etcds to the new cloud and using etcd quorum for the data migration. And um, yeah, for sure we should have uh, backups and recovery for all the components. How does this look like? For example, here we have our seed uh, DNS for our own API server, what's pointing to the three masters. 
There we have our, now our AWS clusters hosted the control plane, and we have the workers who hosting the Kubernetes wise control plane. Everything on GCP. Then, as first, first step, we would again place the VPN that time in the seed cluster, connecting every worker node and uh, master nodes. Then uh, create a quorum with five uh, ECD for the master nodes that ensures that the new two ECDs get the data replicated from GCP nodes to the AWS nodes. Then as next step, if we have achieved that, we can remove two GCP workers and still have a quorum of three. So three or five, if enough is enough for the quorum. And we can therefore also change now the, uh, the, the DNS name to the new uh, AWS cloud provider, load balancer. So there, now we uh, can then uh, remove the quorum also uh, from five to, to three, and we have a stable control plane. Um, for sure, also in this pro procedure, uh, we need then to clean up, remove the old GCP node, again, create a new AWS master node, and then we have three ECDs uh, healthy in the new cloud migrated. In the same way as we migrated the user clusters workers, we now need to migrate the C cluster workers. For that, um, we here can change the, um, the VPN again, create a new worker nodes, and then in this kind also changing here uh, the cloud provider uh, here uh, that it's pointing now to AWS. After this has happened, we can increase here uh, in Kubernetes settings, the default value of etcd replicas to five. That means that the new Kubernetes user cluster controller manager creates two new etcds for every user cluster. That ensures in the same ways as we migrated the etcd on the top, it's migrating also for the, for the users clusters. So I have now a quorum of five uh, etcds running and still pointing to the old DNS, but between clouds. As next step, um, we now creating a new cloud balance load balancer and rename the white card. So that's the connection from the user cluster workers, what we already migrated to the new cloud load balancer. And uh, yes, uh, then we switch over. Um, we adding one new uh, AWS node, replacing all GCP nodes. So we have then a quorum of three entities per user cluster on the new cloud. That is the most recent target. So now we are safe and we can remove the old missing node worker nodes, uh, clean up the old cloud resources. That means we scale down to etcd level three. We um, remove then the VPN overlay and um, we now have the kernel overlay what's routing between the workers again between ETH zero. So then we are successfully migrated every user cluster in the C cluster to the new cloud. So that is the approach what we think are is possible to migrate really 100 clusters without downtime and in a scalable way. So for sure, we are not right now that we just press the button, but that's our future target. Um, so we want to automate also um, the cleanup pro procedure. And for sure, if you want to really make it scalable, we need to write an operator. Currently we did everything by a yeah, hacky help, uh, help um, bash script. Um, and to not like, yeah, doing that by hand, the health checks, we need to have an operator who check the health check, the conditions, and have also some repair options and retry options. But therefore, the Kubernetes reconciling pattern match in the same way as, as match for our cloud migration, where the Kubernetes controller creates the new cloud uh, provider and so on. We can use the reconciling also for the migration and using, okay, we have a new target cloud, operator take care about that, uh, matching the old state to the new state. Um, technical, we also need to stabilize the VPN connection. So um, right now we have only one VPN server. This could be maybe on a bottleneck on bigger clusters. Um, maybe we should deploy multiple VPN clusters. And we have uh, like, maybe uh, have also more 
soft switch between VPN and host networking overlay. That's something what we need to explore more. Um, and maybe their wire card can be an alternative as a VPN connection, what could help maybe on the setup. Okay, um, one more detail. Yeah, currently we tested it in a 1.17 seed cluster where the managed fields feature is not included. Somehow this makes a little bit of trouble between, okay, you have a like, patch by cube control and you have an operator what reconciling the fields. So that's why we currently I'm a little bit limited on the 117 seed clusters. As you saw in the demo, uh, the user cluster can be on 118. Cool, then, um, yeah. Thanks for your attention. Uh, we are happy to answer any questions. So feel free to reach out now. And yeah, thanks to listening. And yeah, Manuel, a few last words from your side. Uh, no, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, and we're open to questions now. Okay, thanks a lot and looking forward to your questions.